In this video, I'm gonna talk about potassium and how that can impact insulin and blood sugar balance. So potassium and blood sugar, it's gonna affect our blood sugar in three main ways. One, potassium helps get glucose inside the cells. And remember, it helps kind of store it, but it also helps op support optimal blood sugar levels. So it has an insulin-like effect. We want glucose to go inside the cell. We don't want it to just hang out in our system because then it's going to lead to more and more insulin being released and eventually it can cause insulin resistance. And then, you know, high blood sugar is not good for us. It can damage our organs. So potassium is awesome because it helps shuttle that glucose inside the cell number one. And it's interesting because a lot of potassium rich foods, not all of them, but a lot of them are also rich in carbohydrates. And I'm like, nature is just so smart. Um, the other way is that it is involved with that conversion of glucose. So it helps us store it. So it helps us get inside the cell. It helps us store it for future use. Uh, if we don't have enough glycogen, which is a stored form of glucose in our liver or muscle tissue, it's very stressful, especially the liver. Um, we also need thyroid hormone in order to store glycogen in the liver, which we'll talk about. Potassium and thyroid have a very big impact on each other, um, but it does. potassium does help us store that glycogen for later use. When we don't have that fuel source, our body's going to use an alternative one. So if we say we don't have a lot of glycogen stored in our liver, then our body's going to utilize an alternative fuel source typically made from stress hormones. Because remember, your body's going to compensate. So if your glucose levels are too low, say it's between a meal, uh, maybe you worked out, haven't eaten for a while, or you just haven't eaten that much day in general, or it's at night time and you're sleeping, of course, you're not going to be eating and your blood sugar levels drop. You're going to release stress hormones, which are then going to break down some glucose from your liver to keep those levels steady. If we cannot do that, we're going to use an alternative fuel source, which is going to typically be coming from breaking down things like muscle tissue. And that's just not great. And it's just more stressful. So the more we can store in our liver, the less of a burden it's going to be on our adrenal glands because we're going to be releasing less stress hormones. So potassium is huge for shuttling glucose in the cells. It's also important for storing it for future energy needs. And then finally, it's important for carbohydrate metabolism. So if we think of how we're using carbs to make energy, that's what carbohydrate metabolism is. And it's in, it helps power an enzyme. So when I talked in the first episode about why minerals are so important, I said how they're cofactors. They're like spark plugs and, and they help kick off reactions. This is how they're doing it. Potassium helps this specific enzyme called pyruvate kinase. Not important, but like if you want to know, there it is. Um, it helps get that enzyme working properly. And that's part of the final step of glycolysis. And glycolysis is just using glucose to make energy um, so that that can help your metabolism run, all the different organ systems in the body keep things going. So potassium is important for shuttling, storing, and then converting uh, glucose into ATP for energy. And if we even just look at the research around like, what are some associations with potassium and blood sugar? Not necessarily causation, but there is a lot, a high association with people that have a higher potassium intake. They have a much reduced risk of type two diabetes. Um, and like thyroid conditions, which isn't shocking when you think about how, important potassium is for keeping healthy blood sugar levels because that's the thing it's not just yes it's important for like using glucose as energy it's important for storing and converting but it's also just important for maintaining healthy glucose levels that's when we can't do that that's when we start to release more insulin and we can become insulin resistant or we start using alternative fuel sources and then we reach burnout and we're not sure why. Um, so it's it's so important for just keeping things functioning optimally so that you can feel good and live in a way where you're not struggling with a lot of symptoms. Last aspect of potassium and blood sugar I want to talk about, because I think it's, I mean, I don't know, maybe, maybe no one's listening to this podcast that uses insulin, but I think it's really interesting either way. Um, so there's kind of like two populations we'll talk about. One is a someone that has diabetes that is not using insulin. And then the other take we're going to look at is someone that is using insulin that has diabetes. So if we think about it, 
Number one, like insulin resistance lowers how much potassium you absorb. We see that very clearly in the research. Um, And then people with less potassium release less insulin. So it's like this vicious cycle, right? So, but that's for someone that's not using insulin. Uh, So um, there's one study that there's a lot of other ones that have been replicated since, but they found that potassium depletion was associated with a decrease in pancreatic beta cell sensitivity to hyperglycemia or high blood sugar with a reduction in insulin release. So what this means is that they found that people that had low potassium had less sensitive, their beta cells in their pancreas, which that's what releases insulin, they had less sensitivity to a high blood sugar level. Because normally, you know, our bodies are constantly looking out for us. Our brain is sensing everything. If our brain senses high blood sugar levels, then your pancreas is going to be notified, hey, those beta cells need to release insulin. If our if we're not as sensitive to that high blood sugar level because of these low potassium levels, then we're going to be making less insulin. Low potassium also leads to not as strong of an insulin release. So it's like this vicious cycle of people struggling with low potassium. So they have a harder time managing their blood sugar. And then that mismanagement of blood sugar leads to more difficulty having adequate potassium levels. So, you know, it it just, it kind of goes and goes and goes. But what it was interesting when I was reading the studies are like, you know, for people that aren't using insulin, it's just so important to have adequate potassium intake, and we'll talk about insulin in a second. I think it's important for both populations, but especially for those that are not using insulin, I feel like they could probably restore, depending on, you know, nutrition, lifestyle, health history, restore a lot of that function and improve their insulin if they were increasing their potassium intake through food. Um, And then when it comes to insulin, for the population that uses insulin, it's a little different. So because they're using insulin, that insulin can actually help it, it basically improves how our sodium potassium pump works. So if you remember from the last episode, we talked a lot about the sodium potassium pump. So it's this pump on all of our cells and it helps, it pumps sodium outside of the cell. Because remember, that's our extracellular mineral electrolyte. And then it pumps sodium ions inside the cell because that's our intracellular electrolyte. So insulin helps make this pump more effective and it makes it so that we're getting more and more potassium inside the cells, but that's lowering our blood level. So people that utilize insulin can experience low potassium levels in the blood or hypokalemia because it's increasing how much potassium is getting stored inside our tissues. Um, And if we have low levels in the blood, then that could cause other problems. So it's still important to like hyperglycemia because remember the potassium gets the insulin inside the cell. So it's still important for both populations to take in uh, potassium rich foods, but I would be much more cautious of potassium levels of someone that was using insulin since it is just going to keep storing and storing potassium. Um, But just very interesting. This population also typically struggles with blood pressure. And it makes me wonder um, because they're storing more insulin and releasing more sodium into the blood, you know, is that part of why or store, storing more potassium and releasing more sodium into blood is that why um because it that sodium retention could increase their blood pressure it's just interesting you know what would happen if they increased their potassium intake would their blood pressure decrease um who knows but just something to consider uh for those that are have blood sugar concerns maybe you use insulin maybe you don't and how effective potassium can be for that 